as with all paid advertising costs, are a primary concern. With seven search display ads and the proper campaign management, those costs can be minuscule compared to other paid advertising options. I've run several campaigns on this platform and have had excellent results being able to manage the campaign using available reports and targeting tools. The campaign that I will use for this article is in the health and wellness niche, which is extremely competitive and paid advertising is saturated with promotions in this niche. However, I have still been able to manage the campaign to the point where my CPC is averaging 1.6 to 1.8 cents per click. With a less competitive niche and the proper management of the campaign, I believe it's possible to redefine your CPC from cost per click to clicks per cent. Wouldn't that be nice? This is not necessarily a plug for 7 search, just the platform I'm most familiar with, so these methods should be applicable to most CPM networks, depending on reporting tools and targeting options. I want this to be applicable to all levels of marketers, so let's define a few things before jumping in. CPM cost per thousand impressions. Keep in mind with display ads you bid and pay for impressions, not clicks. However, you can still measure your campaign by calculating CPC cost per click so that it's comparable to other advertising methods. Calculating your CPC is fairly simple, just divide the amount spent by the number of clicks. So if you spend 0 and have 100 clicks, 10.00 slash 100 equal 0.10 or 10 cents per click. Bidding on CPM is similar to bidding on PPC pay per click. You're just bidding on impressions rather than clicks and tends to be less competitive. 7 search minimum is 50 cents per CPM and I seldom bid any more than that although you may want to depending on the competition in new niche. Placing your ads is easy. 7 search offers 17 different ad sizes and you just choose the file off your computer and then add your destination URL. The sizes have to fit exactly and the files have size limitations so you may need to resize your ads to fit and compress to meet file size restrictions. I resize with Microsoft Paint and use Office to compress the files so you don't need expensive imaging software to achieve this. Once you've added your creatives and chosen your keywords and categories you're off and running. No. Be patient when making changes. Creatives have to be approved before they run and changes to the campaign take a little time to process through and show results. I don't suggest you apply all the changes I'll talk about at once, make some changes and let them run for a day or two and then reevaluate and make additional changes and so on. If you make all the adjustment I discuss at once your campaign will fall apart on you and you won't know what changes did what and your results won't be anywhere near what you're hoping they would be so take your time. Small changes, measure and evaluate small changes, measure and evaluate, don't get too carried away. Reports and tools you'll be using to fine-tune your campaigns are the keyword slash channel report, the traffic sites report and the banners report. Keywords I'm not going to get into most of us know what keywords we want to use and how to evaluate those. If not, there are tons of articles about keywords out there so just search around. When you first set up your campaign I suggest adding as many creatives banners as possible and then you'll weed out those not performing as you're managing your campaign. Managing your campaign isn't too difficult, we'll use the keywords slash channels reports to eliminate those that aren't getting results, the banners report to eliminate the banners that don't attract clicks and the traffic sites report to block those sites that don't provide desired results. So let's get to it. I'm going to walk you through the process that I use. Doesn't mean you have to follow this exactly, but it's what works for me. As you get used to using the reports to make changes and fine-tune your campaign, I'm sure you'll develop a process that works best for you. Once your campaign is up and running, let it run for a few days so you have good data. As I said before, don't be in a big hurry. 
Also, as you start making change, pay attention to your date range on your reports. Don't leave your date range too broad, or they will include stats from changes you've already made. Not that it's an issue to look at a broader range of data. Just keep in mind what you're looking at as you evaluate things. I try to look at two date ranges, usually a weekly report and a daily report. If you're evaluating every two or three days, change your date ranges to mirror your evaluation time frame. Also don't get carried away with your daily spending. I'll start my campaigns with a, a day budget, and once I have the campaign performing at the level I want, then I'll start to increase the daily spending. Don't jump your daily spending up too much at once. As you increase daily spending, you still need to monitor and evaluate your campaign performance. A higher daily spend doesn't necessarily mean your performance will remain constant. So once again, take your time. Keywords slash channels report. This report will show you your keywords and channels as well as impressions, clicks, your CTR click-through rate, and amount spent. The amount spent and the clicks I don't pay too much attention to so your impressions and CTR is what you'll use to adjust your keywords and channels. What I look for are those keywords slash channels that have high impression rates and look at the CTRs associated with those keywords slash channels. If I have a keyword that has a high impression rate with a CTR that is above 1% I'll leave those in the beginning. Although 1% isn't what I'm wanting to see those rates may improve as you remove lower performing keywords. If the CTR is below 1% I'll drop those keywords off but only those that have a higher impression rate. Leave the keywords that have low impression rates because as you remove keywords at the top of the list, those lower keywords may start performing better and with a lower impression rate, they aren't costing you much if anything. The keyword slash channel report will also show sites on it with the ability to block those sites. I don't block sites on this report, but evaluate those and make changes to sites on the traffic sites report. Banners report. Your banners report will show the same stats as the keywords report only applied to each creative you have loaded rather than keywords. The process for evaluating this report is essentially the same. Focus on your CTRs and drop those creatives that are getting high impressions rates but have CTRs below 1%. Don't remove those creatives that have low impression rates, only the ones that have decent impression rates but low CTRs. You don't want to remove those that have low impression rates because as you remove the creatives that have high impression rates with low CTRs, those lower creatives will start to get more impressions and you can evaluate those as time goes. Don't worry about removing creatives. As you remove creatives, you will most likely see a drop in impressions, but don't worry. The network makes its money off impressions. As you remove creatives, they lose the money that they would have made off those creatives, and their system will start driving the remaining creatives to get you impressions on those. They'll get you the impression. It's how they make their money. So once again, small changes, measure and evaluate. Traffic Sites Report The Sites Report shows that same stats as the other two reports and once again the process is the same. Block those high impression low CTR sites. This report has a couple of more options. You can remove sites as you can with the other reports, but you can block them. You can also target sites. No. The target function only takes you to the bid page, so you can increase bids for that site. I don't use the target function much at all. As with the banners report look for those sites that are getting high impression rates with low CTRs. The same process you use with the other reports. You can see the actual sites, only a number that identifies the site. Also notice that you can sort the data in the reports by column to make evaluation easier. The process that I use to fine-tune my campaigns is to start with the banner report. Remember that this is CPM and your banners are your attention grabbers. You see banners everywhere you go on the web and to get those clicks, they have to catch the viewer's attention enough to get them to click. I concentrate on removing those banners that are getting traffic but not clicks before I do anything with sites or keywords.
I want to leave as many sites and keywords out there as possible so that my banners have the opportunity to get as much traffic as possible before I start to remove low performing ones. I will also only remove those banners that have high impression rates with low CTRs. Those banners that have low impression rates leave them as you remove the low performing high impression banners many that had low impression rates before will start to increase and you can evaluate those. As time goes, once I'm satisfied with my banner performance, I'll move to the site's report. Same process, block the high impression low CTR sites and leave the low impression sites and see if they improve over time. Then I'll move to the keywords slash channels report and follow the same process. Once again take your time and don't get in a hurry. Small changes, measure and evaluate.